character tutorial for the awesome modeling application Void World and today we're going to cover creating the reference planes in the 3D perspective viewport so that we can then begin to model our uh, character. Um, so to begin this process you're going to want to make sure that you switch from the custom 3D perspective to the front orthographic viewport and you do this by clicking where it says custom and clicking on front and you'll notice the darker lines on here that come to the center of the screen it makes a crosshair that is the origin of your screen now sometimes you're going to have to move this around and be able to move around on the screen so now i'm going to teach you how to do that using the hotkey and mouse combinations the hotkey if you're a previous silo user which is what i am you're going to want to hold down the alt key on the keyboard and middle click on your mouse and this switches the icon as long as you hold down the alt and the middle mouse button it changes the pointer to a hand which puts you in pan mode so you can pan the screen around so you can move the, the origin to the center of the screen which is what we want and also some of the other things I'm going to switch brief, briefly to the 3D uh, perspective view so I can show you the other options that you might need to know for the hot keys and the mouse combinations so go ahead and click <coughs> where it says orthographic up here and that brings you back into perspective mode and then okay Hold down the Alt key and using the left mouse button at the same time, you'll notice it changes into two little circles, kind of forming a plus. This is the rotate key combination. Again, that's the Alt key and the left mouse button. <clears throat> and we want our 3D viewport to kind of be like this so that we can actually see when we go to line up the planes. The other hotkey combination you're probably going to want is the Alt key and the right mouse button. Hold these two down and you see you get a little magnifying glass with a plus symbol in the center. This is for zooming in and out. And if you drag the mouse to the left while holding down the Alt key and the right mouse button, it zooms out. And if you drag to the right, it zooms in. <clears throat> now, those hotkeys will come in very handy as we finish the rest of this tutorial setting up the reference points. Now, once again, let's click on Custom and go back to the front orthographic viewport and ensure our crosshairs are in the middle or as close to the middle as we can get right now. The next step you're going to want to do is make sure the object icon is clicked at the top of the visual tools panel. Now I have mine set up so that each of the various tool things are a tab and there are different panels in here. Like there's the visual tools, there's the manipulation toolbar that's normally at the bottom of the screen, there's the soft selection, there's the transform list, there's the scene explorer, there's the scene info where you can find out how many polygons and whatnot your objects have in the scene. There's the math selection where you can select different parts of your model based on mathematical computations and stuff. And there is the light settings where you can change the light settings in your scene. We're going to want to go ahead and go back to the visual tools, make sure the object icon is clicked at the top which is the one all the way to the right that looks like a grayed out cube in 3D and with that selected the next thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and click on plane which is right here toward the middle at the bottom of the real buttons it says plane click on that and then you'll see the default options for the various options of creating the plane comes up you see the width segments is set to 3, the length segments is set to 3, um, the various create methods, you can either drop it or use snap normal, create in scene, um, and you got a create button there. That's not the one we want to focus on right now though. Right below that where it says create with image, you want to make sure the length fixed is still checked and align to viewport plane is checked. That is the whole reason we switched to the front orthographic view before we did this is so that it would come in creating our plane with an image and it would be facing the right direction. Now that we got that we want to create we want to click the create button and this is going to bring up an open window where we can select the images that we need for this particular plane which of course it is the front view. Now the images I'm going to be using for my project might be different than the images you're using. Um, 
this is just some images, some sketches that my eight-year-old daughter drew <clears throat> for a game that we're currently working on. It's just a, a simple little guy that's kind of reminiscent of like a hillbilly or something. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the front view and hit open. And you'll notice he comes in there. And if you look at the plane that's currently on the screen that it created, you'll see these arrows. And you'll see a little box in the center. And they turn yellow when you mouse over them. This is the move manipulator. The same thing we can get to if we click on the manipulator tab. And it's normally at the bottom of your screen. And you'll see the various things up here. You got move, which is the double arrows and like a plus sign. <clears throat> and the interesting thing in Void World, if you move your mouse over top of any of these icons, it actually gives you the hotkey combination that you can use to actually access the same menu option without having to come over here and click, which is what I usually like to do if I wasn't recording the tutorial, I would be making way better use of the hotkeys because I like to keep all my mouse activity using my uh, pen on the tablet screen here on the screen without having to leave the screen while I'm working on various things. Now, what we need right now, we don't need the move manipulator, which is with the arrows here, <coughs> because our character is already at the center of the origin. What we're needing first off is the scale manipulator. And it's the manipulator that looks like a right angle with two squares at the bottom left hand corner of the right angle. <clears throat> Go ahead and click on that and you'll notice our manipulator on the screen <clears throat> changes to a right angle with balls on it instead of the arrows. This lets you know you're in the scale mode and you can scale it wide, you know, to left to right or up and down or if you put your mouse in the center of that uh, right angle toward the, the center ball you can scale in both directions which is what we're wanting to do um, we're going to go ahead and scale this up so that our character is exactly two major grid lines tall one <clears throat> two not the little grid lines in the center but the major ones okay so go ahead and left click when you have all three balls yellow and you're toward the center ball left click hold it down and drag it to the right and we're going to scale this up just until it fills up two major grid lines like so <clears throat> okay once we get this done we are now at the point where if you look at the origin lines here this line right here that runs left to right that's darker than the rest of the lines that is going to be our floor reference so when we look at the floor grid in the 3d view that is what we're actually looking at <clears throat> so to model our character I'm, i always like to move him up so that it appears he is standing on this line or at least the bottom of the picture is standing on this line and the, the way that we do this again is to make sure we're on the manipulation tab and either press the w key or we can go ahead and just click on the double arrows that look like a plus sign I'll go ahead and click on that now. You notice the manipulator changes back to the arrow points on the end with a square box in the center. Now, we're not going to want to move in both directions on this because we're already lined up left to right. We just want to simply move him up. So what we're going to do is move our mouse over top of the blue arrow, which is pointing down currently. Left click and then drag up until it appears that our character is standing on top of that bottom line. It doesn't have to be precise, just as close as you can get it, so that when we set up for modeling later on, we'll be modeling on top of the grid lines, which is what we want. Now, the next thing we need to do is to switch to the 3D viewport, and you do this by clicking orthographic again to go to perspective view. And again, you're gonna to wanna to use the hotkey combination of holding down the alt key and left mouse button to rotate it around so you can see. Now, we're gonna to want to move him back from the origin, okay? And the way that I think we're gonna to wanna to do this is move him back all the way to the next major grid line in the back, okay? The way you do this is to highlight the green arrow on the move manipulator, left click, hold the button down and push up toward the top and you'll notice the character moves back okay 
this is what we want to do move it back to the next major grid line so that it looks like he's sitting on the lighter line which is I think 10 squares back from the origin okay now if we hold down the alt key and left click again we can rotate it around and look at him and you notice he's in the center of the origin he's just one major grid line back and we may change this here in a minute once we bring in the side view and adjust that side view plane. We're going to want both of these to line up so that your character center is going to be at the center origin line as well. Okay, now, instead of being in a 3D <coughs> viewport, we're going to need to switch back to the right orthographic viewport this time by clicking on Custom and going to Right. Now, when you do this, you can actually see the other plane that you created is still highlighted. What you need to do is, ooh, wait, looks like I moved him back too far. We're going to scoot him this way as well. Put him about right there, because there's the origin. Okay, now we're going to click anywhere else except on that plane to unhighlight that one. And we're going to go back to our visual tools menu and again click on the plane button which brings up the create plane with image panel that we need and again down here we're going to click the create button and it's going to bring up the images selection and this time I'm going to select the side view image that I created for the other reference plane and click open and you notice it brings it in and it's not really the right size we need it to be again we want this to be just as tall as the other plane that created so we're going to need to first go back to the manipulation plane and switch into the scale mode again which is hotkey R if you don't want to go to the manipulation plane <clears throat> if you are going to go there you can click left click on the right angle with the two squares on it which changes it again to the balls and we're going to want to click in the center of this right angle which when all three balls are yellow and you have the center part of the right triangle highlighted left click hold it down and drag toward the right and it'll scale up and we want to get it until it's just two major grid lines tall like the other one <clears throat> now when you have this I noticed that this part of the drawing is a little bit too thin it's not even one major grid line wide so it is about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It is seven grid lines. We need it to be at least ten. So this time, before we do anything else, we're going to go highlight the rightmost, well, we're still in the right viewport, highlight the right ball to where it turns yellow, left click, and drag to the right until we get to where we're ten minor grid lines, minor grid squares wide about right there now you'll notice our character seems a little bit fatter which is what we we're looking for and we're going to go ahead and go back to the move manipulator which is hotkey w if you're not on the manipulation panel it's the double arrows if you are that's in the shape of a plus sign go ahead and get back onto the visual tools panel so that you can see that for later use and we again want to move this picture up so we're going to highlight the blue arrow